Ah, uh, don't you just hate how difficult it can be to accurately punch a centre? There's got to be a better way. Okay, okay, let me sound a bit less like an infomercial for a minute because I might be exaggerating things just a little bit. Well, hey guys, welcome back. This is a bit of a different video this week because I have a few birthdays and obviously Christmas coming up and it might not be hugely surprising, but I'm one of those people who like to make gifts rather than buy them. And I guess at least in one respect, it does help justify having this shop. Or at least that's what I tell myself. Anyway, for one of my friends, I'm going to make him an optical center punch as a gift. I think it would be a nice gift and he'd definitely appreciate it. Now, if you've never heard of one of these tools before, I don't blame you. I don't think they're very common tools, but all they're for is helping you punch center marks and unlike a regular center, they help you punch centers just a bit more accurately. They consist of a body, a removable punch, and a magnifier. There's typically a magnifier with a cross that helps you line up the punch. You then replace that with the punch itself, and then once you hit it with a hammer, it makes a punch mark. They're very basic tools, they're very old school, but I think they're really cool. I think they're probably more ornamental these days, but I think they'd look nice in his makerspace next to his 3D printers. And to anyone else who has designer friends or hobby machinist friends or engineer friends, I think these would definitely make a nice little gift. Anyway, let's get started. So we'll start off with some 32mm round bar. I'll start off by facing off and then cleaning up the ends. I'll then drill a hole all the way through. Now the next bit probably isn't necessary, but I'll ream it to its final dimension, which in this case is about 10mm, and that's about as small as you'd want to go. Now I could leave the bottom surface like this, and many designs do, but I think the best designs incorporate an o-ring into the bottom. The reason for adding it is that it provides a bit more grip and it lets you easily hold position as you swap from the center finder to the punch. Again, you probably don't need one, but I think it is a good addition. So I find an o-ring size that roughly fits, although the exact size probably doesn't matter, just one that sort of looks right. I'll then use a parting tool to cut in a groove in the front face. Before I can do any machining, I am going to quickly modify the holder because the parting tool blade which I'm using, which isn't exactly meant for this type of work, doesn't have enough clearance on the bottom side. Now I think this SolidWorks demo should probably show you a lot better than I could show, but essentially the tool is not designed to do this sort of circular facing cut and the bottom outside edge would rub up against the part. Now in the past I have made tools for doing this, but the one that I was using last time unfortunately snapped, so Instead of re-grinding a piece from high speed steel, I simply ground down the carbide tool holder to add a bit more clearance. I wouldn't worry a whole lot about this tool holder because it's getting replaced soon anyway, so modifying it wasn't a huge problem. Now again, this is not a critical application for O-rings, so you don't need to worry about the exact size for the groove, just make it a bit smaller than the O-ring, just so that it fits snugly and it doesn't fall out. And thankfully the O-ring fits in quite snugly. I 
I'll remove the punch body and then get in a piece of round bar. Now I'm going to be adding a concave curve to the profile just to make it a bit nicer and make holding it a little bit easier. But because I started with such a short piece of stock, I'm not going to be able to hold it in the chuck and then machine in that profile. So what I need to do is turn up a mandrel to hold the workpiece in place and then I can machine it. And to add the profile, I'll simply manually machine it until I find a curve that looks right and then I'll file it down by hand. And with it now polished, that's the body done. The next thing I'll do is turn up the pin. Now you'll generally want some type of high carbon steel to make the pin, and that's what I have here. I have a piece of 10mm W1 tool steel, which will do the job just fine. Now depending on your lathe and chuck, you may want to swap out your normal chuck for either a four jaw or a collet chuck. And this will help reduce the run out and get the center point directly in the center of the part. What I'm doing here is I'm rounding off the back striking face just to make striking it a little bit easier. So it won't cause me any issues if I don't strike the face dead flat. Finally, we can harden it. Now I debated whether to fully harden it or just harden the point and I eventually settled on only hardening the point. I'm sure there's arguments either way but the way that I see it is that we don't really need two hardened surfaces striking each other and given that you only need to lightly tap the pin with a hammer to get this thing to work, I don't think the head will be mushroomed over anytime soon. Finally, after quenching it, I'll remove all the oxide that's built up with some abrasive paper. With that now done, the pin should be hardened to at least 60 or 65 Rockwell C hardness. Now that's definitely hard enough, but in this state, it's probably too brittle to be used on steel without risking it cracking. So what I'll do is I'll pop it in the oven to temper at about 200 degrees. And once it tempers in the oven, I'll start working on the optical center finder. Essentially all it is is a clear piece of acrylic with a domed head and a center mark. Now I'm sure you could use other clear plastics, but I used to do a lot of plastic machining and acrylic is probably the easiest clear plastic to work with and polish. Plus I have a fair amount of it, so I'm going to use acrylic. So after cleaning up the end, I'll turn a section down to about 10mm. Now normally when I machine plastic, I use carbide inserts that are a lot sharper than this, but I don't currently have any at the moment, so I'll have to work with these, and in any event, these will work just fine. With that now done, I'll use some 400 grit to create the domed top. And it should be noted that you only need a small amount of doming on the top to give you a good amount of magnification. I'll then use micro mesh pads to polish out the plastic. These range from about 1500 all the way up to 12,000 grit and they work really well. Just make sure to use this with water, otherwise the acrylic will start to melt and gunk up the pads.
Now after getting the other side cut and polished, it's now time to decide what the marking should be on the bottom side. Now a lot of designs use a cross, which I'm sure does work, but I'm simply going to add a small dot in the centre, which is a design I prefer. Now to do this I'll use a small engraving bit, which will work fine, however for this I only held it in the 3 jaw chuck, and I only tightened it a little bit just to avoid marring up the acrylic, and that was a bit of a mistake, because as you can see, there is a fair amount of run out here, and I think that's down to only tightening up the jaws a little bit. Now unfortunately I didn't see just how bad it was until I saw it on playback, so this part will need recutting, probably done using the collet chuck. And I'm going to be using a bit of marker to make the dot stand out. And that is the punch set now done. Or at least almost. Because what I still need to make is a stand to hold all the parts. Now in fairness some designs do incorporate the holder into the main body, but in fairness what I'm doing here is going for more aesthetics over function, so even if that design is a bit better, I think I'm a lot happier with the design that I'm going with. So what I'll do is I'll make a stand from some aluminium, and it's going to give me a good opportunity to test out the punch. Now initially I was going to go for a clean fly cut finish, but I kept getting really bad tear out with this aluminium alloy that I was using. This piece of aluminium has been giving me a lot of issues, so using it here in a non-critical project was also a good chance to use it up. I'm not exactly sure what the problem is, it's just a lot more gummy than this material is supposed to be. So instead I went for a brushed finish, which in fairness I think looked a lot nicer in the end. Finally, let's see the punch in action. So with the body roughly in place, I'll insert the magnifier and then we can use it to line it up against the layout and get it exactly where we want it to be. We can then swap it out for the punch and then lightly hit it with a hammer. And as you can see, the punch lines up really well. Once again, is it a necessary piece of kit? Absolutely not, but I think it's a really cool piece of kit to have on hand nonetheless. Finally, I'll drill out two holes for the pins and then bore out a hole for the body. And once again, I had quite a few issues machining this piece of aluminium. I do know that I'm not using the correct inserts for aluminium, but even so, it's not usually this bad. What seemed to work best was just to flood the cup with oil and then just hope for the best. In the end though, I think it turned out looking really great. Now off camera, I'll probably engrave a message onto the front, but that's about it for this project. All in all, this tool may not be everyone's cup of tea, but I'm really happy with how it turned out, and I'd be pretty chuffed to be given one as a present. In total, it was about 5 hours worth of work, and it was a lovely Sunday afternoon project to get done. And that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next week.